Hey guys, it's Pete here again with AquaFX. Today we're gonna to be doing an installation of a piggyback membrane setup onto an R, our existing RO, RODI system. Um, we're gonna be doing it in two different versions. The first version is gonna be what we refer to as in parallel. That's basically where we split the product, the feed, and the wastewater streams, and we just join them all together. So we have twice as much product, twice as much wastewater, and the feed is being split into two RO membranes. Uh, we're also gonna be doing the setup uh, that we might consider a wastewater saver, where we have the wastewater from the first RO membrane actually feeding water into the second RO membrane. Now to do that approach, we're gonna need at least 60 pounds of pressure as we lose about 10 PSI going across the first membrane. So if you don't have 60 PSI, you're gonna to have to integrate a booster pump or something else to increase the pressure. Um, but again, we're gonna be discussing both approaches so you can see which one works best for you. I just got my add-on membrane piggyback kit in the mail from AquaFX. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up, see what we've got. Pull out any sort of packaging, put that to the side. Gonna notice my 100 gallon per day AquaFX RO membrane. You notice I have a little installation kit with two clips, three T's, and some tubing. Then we've got our RO membrane housing with the cap off. Go ahead and just put that on there for right now. And we've got some installation instructions, which we'll be going over in full detail. First thing I'm gonna do with this piggyback setup is I'm gonna install the RO membrane into the housing. Go ahead and notice that there's an O-ring here. You wanna make sure that stays in place. And I like to just go ahead and cut the membranes open. Membranes are manufactured with a preservative on them, so they will be shipped to you fully sealed. Go ahead and just pull it out. You don't need to do anything to the membrane itself. Just install it, double O-ring first, into the membrane housing, like such. I like to push it in with my thumb. You'll feel it seat inside the housing. And then we just go ahead and screw the cap on. Pretty easy. At this point, I'll go ahead and grab my two clips provided. And I'll just go ahead and put them on the membrane housing existing. And now I'm gonna put my membrane on here in the same orientation is the first membrane that was on the housing. Good start. So now for the first setup, we're gonna be installing this in parallel, where we're gonna split the feed, split the waste, and split the product. So, first thing I'm gonna do is, I like to just go ahead and cut the line feeding the first RO membrane. Take one of my provided T fittings. And I'll just go ahead and push those in till I feel them seat past the O-rings. And I've now got a port that will feed water into my second RO membrane. I might dry measure like this, see that we need about that length. Give it a nice flat cut, never any angles. And I'm just gonna go ahead and push it into this fitting here. So now, essentially, we have pre-treated water being fed into both of our RO membranes. The next step is pretty important. Go ahead and flip this around. I'm now I'm gonna disconnect my drain line, holding the collar flush into the fitting, pulling the drain line out, and notice that my flow restrictor has become enlarged inside my membrane elbow. Sometimes it won't. Sometimes it'll come right out with the tube, but sometimes it definitely gets stuck like this. So what I do to get it out of there, if I can just lightly pull it out, fine, but a lot of times it gets past this collet. So now, with my fingertips, I compressed the collet so that it would come out of the fitting. So now essentially I have the collet, the floor restrictor, and my elbow. I'm now gonna take my collet and just place it back into the elbow. See that? Very straightforward. I'm now going to take my drain line and what I like to do is I like to loop the two drain lines together first. It's very important to take note of which elbow is the drain line. There's one way to tell where the fitting closest to the center will be your product water, therefore the fitting furthest off center will be the wastewater. And what I want to do is connect my existing wastewater line to my new wastewater line. And the fittings should look like they're in the same orientation with one another. 
So I've now got both my drain lines together and I like to just cut it here. Again, a nice flat cut and install the second of my three quick connect tees. Now, as a final step, it is very important that this floor restrictor is placed on the final exit of where the two drain lines come together. So I go ahead and install that on my final exit and place this in the quarter inch T, again feeling it seat past the O-ring. And now both my drain lines are coming together, they're meeting one floor restrictor, and they will go to wherever your final drain line destination is. So now we just have one final step. That is, we're going to connect both of our product lines together via the third supplied quarter inch T. And again, what I like to do here is just cut the line that's feeding into the DI and place a T. So now our T-fitting has one open port where he can receive a piece of quarter inch tube. That's going to come from our product water off our newly installed RO membrane. Feeling it seat past the O-ring. And then I just push it into the T-fitting, again feeling it seat. And now, this has just transformed from a 100 to a 200 gallon per day, or even some customers will run parallel 50 gallon per day for a 100 end result. That was the piggyback installation of the RO membrane in parallel. Again, you're gonna get about twice as much product, twice as much waste. Essentially, you're just doubling everything that the RO membrane's doing. We're gonna go ahead and do the install of the piggyback membrane in series this time, so that basically you're gonna have two membranes creating product water, but only one membrane producing wastewater. So this is gonna help uh, conserve water, as well as reduce just the overall amount wasted. Um, I went ahead and installed the RO membrane into my housing. So what I'm gonna do first is just clip it onto my existing membrane. I would like to orient this canister the same way that the first canister is. I'm just going to go ahead and clip that on there. The first connection I'm going to make is I'm going to divert the wastewater from my newly installed membrane to become the feed water for my previously existing membrane. So again, taking note of which is the product and which is the waste is absolutely pertinent here. The product is going to be very close to center. The waste is going to be further off center. So I'm just going to connect the waste from my newly installed membrane to the feed water for my existing RO membrane. I'm going to first disconnect the feed that's going into my existing RO. And I'm now going to go ahead and just install the wastewater so that the wastewater from my newly installed membrane is now feeding into the cap of my previously installed membrane. Pushing that until I feel it seat past the O-ring. Perfect. Now, I'm gonna take the feed that was going into the cap of my existing membrane and place that into the feed of my newly installed RO membrane. From here, all that we're really gonna need to do is join the product water from our newly installed RO membrane and tee that into the line from the existing product water from our previous RO membrane. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get my tube cutters in here, give it a nice flat cut. And I like to install my T-fitting with the port facing up. And again, the product water is the only left, is the only fitting open at this point. I'm just going to go ahead and join the tube there, push it in, and see that we need about a length this long. Cut it. Oops. And just go ahead and insert the tube into that T. Now, our system is going to produce twice as much product water, but we're only going to have one RO membrane creating wastewater. So this is the 
a uh, little bit more efficient or at least green way to operate your system. Now you're gonna have to have at least 60 pounds of pressure because as you pass through the first membrane, you're gonna lose about 10 PSI. So if your system's operating say between 40, 45 PSI, somewhere in there, you're definitely gonna wanna include one of our AquaFX booster pumps. Okay guys, this has been the installation of the piggyback membrane in series. Um, again, this is gonna yield your least amount of wastewater, double your production. Uh, one thing to take note is that the membrane, the second membrane that's receiving the wastewater from the first membrane, we would expect him to fail a little bit sooner because he's receiving the concentrate or wastewater from the first membrane. So that second membrane will fail a little sooner, but that's okay uh, given our wastewater savings. Um, any questions about this setup or the parallel piggyback setup, please give us a call at 407-599-2123 or you can always email us sales at aquaee.com. That's A-Q-U-A-E-E.com. Thanks guys. Have a good one.